we want to compare the spread of our two groups. So we normally would look at the interquartile range. So interquartile range, just a reminder for you, interquartile range equals the upper quartile, take away the lower quartile. So it's how spread out the box is in our box and whisker pot. So at excellence level, we also want to be able to look at the standard deviation for each of those two. And there's a separate video there um, for more information about what a standard deviation is. So let's have a look at our rugby players. If I take the width of those two boxes, and you can see the red arrows that I've just added. So I'm looking at how spread out is the interquartile range of our backs compared to the interquartile range of our forwards. Now you can see there that the width of the forwards, this box here, this arrow, is wider than the width of the backs. So that tells us that the middle 50% of the forward weight is a little more spread out, there's more variation there, whereas backs there's less variation, so there's a lot more common values, a lot more data values that are clumped in the middle here, whereas here there's a lot more spread out of those data values. So that's what we want to say in our analysis, is we want to say well, which group is more spread out, and in our case it's the forwards that are more spread out, and we want to talk about whether that a little bit spread out, uh, more spread out, or a lot more spread out. So the achieved answer is just being able to say overall the middle 50% of the weights of forwards is slightly more spread out than the, med the middle 50% weights of the backs for our sample of New Zealand and South African rugby players. For merit, we want to go on and add some evidence to this. So let's go back to our graph. We need to find the interquartile ranges. So when I'm looking at my backs, I want to find my lower quartile of my backs, which is at 88 kilograms. I want to find the upper quartile of my backs weight, um, which is at 96 kilograms. So that's what we're looking at. How wide is it? What's the distance between 88 and 96? And that's my interquartile range. So the interquartile range for my backs is 8 kilograms. Then we want to do the same kind of calculation for our forwards, the weights of them. So our lower quartile of our forwards weight is at 104 kilograms, and our upper quartile is at 117 kilograms. So we interquartile range is the distance between that 104 kilograms and 117. So we're looking at how wide that space is there, and we can find there the interquartile range for our forward weights is 12.5 kilos. And so that confirms that this number is a bit bigger than this number here. Equally, if I look at my standard deviations, um, then that standard deviation for the forwards is 10.6. The standard deviation of the backs is 9.7. So this one here, they're actually reasonably close together, 9.7, 10.6. So they're reasonably close. But this, the um, standard deviation of the forwards is again a little higher than the standard deviation of the backs. So that's what we want to be able to say, is our interquartile range for the weights of forwards is 12.2 kilos, while the interquartile range for the weight of backs is 7.5 kilos, and that is, that's our evidence to show that the forwards have got more variation in their weights than the backs. And then I've also put in a comment there about the standard deviations of 10.6 and 9.7 and they're close in size and that kind of indicates that the difference in the spread of these weights is not large okay because they're reasonably close together excellence we want to try and find a story to be able to understand why is the weights of our forwards a little more spread out so why is this data here a little more spread out than this data. Okay, so that's what we're trying to explain is why is there more variation. So if I look at the group one, okay, that's talking about the role of forwards. And I've got to think, well, why is there variation in the weights of forwards? So that's what I'm talking about in this paragraph, is I'm talking about the roles of forwards. Some of them work in the middle, securing the scrum, making lots of tackles. Another role that, that forwards play is somebody who makes the line-out jumps, and they, I know they particularly happen to be quite tall, 
So, because they need to have a very long arm reach to be able to catch the ball when they do a line out throw. So that means within the forwards, some of them are short, stocky players that are quite low to the ground and are good at making tackles. Others of them tend to be really tall um, with a long reach, but still a fair amount of weight. Um, so there's a different, quite a difference in the roles that some of these forwards play. So that's my explanation of why there is a why there's a difference, why there's some variation in the weights of forwards, and that's why they're not all exactly the same weight. I'm going to do the same thing for looking at the second group and looking at how wide is their variation in the spread of the backs. So within the backs, we've got slightly less variation, and that I think is because really there's only one key role for the backs. It's either to run or kick. Um, both of which require them to think very quickly and to be, have very fast on their feet. So these roles require the player to be fast, which usually means they're going to be small and weigh less. So they need enough muscle, that's why they weigh on average about 96 kilos, or 92 kilos, rather than um, the average male who might only weigh 80 kilos. So they need enough muscle strength, but they don't make as many tackles and so they don't need the same bulk of muscle as the forwards do. So then I'm going to compare those two spreads and say well based on our research we've got slightly more variation in the weights of forwards because there's more variation in the roles that they have on the field which leads to a slightly wider spread in the weights of the forwards.